What's up everyone? Welcome back to another review and this time we're taking a look at Terror Track, a made-for-TV movie that was released in the year 2000, 24 years ago. Okay, so let's make this review as short and sweet as possible. I remember watching this movie when it first came out 24 years ago on TV and I remember kind of sort of liking it. Uh, there, when I was 10 years old, I was just slowly starting to get into horror anthologies and stuff like that. Like I was always a fan of Tales from the Crypt and things like that. But in terms of movie form, I was slowly starting to get, get into it because I, I was watching Creepshow and Creepshow 2 at the time. So like the whole like the whole thing of like horror anthology and like these little short stories in one big movie was slowly starting to appeal to me. And Terror Tract was one of those first movies that I saw. Uh, and I vaguely remember liking it when I was a kid. Like I think I, I think I've maybe seen it maybe two or three times. Excuse me, and then I never saw it again uh, until now, where I watched it again after a very, very long time. And I can say this: Terror Tract will not go down as one of the greatest things you'll ever see. As a matter of fact, it's the exact. It's not one of the worst things you'll ever see either. It's an. It's just an okay uh, horror anthology. Uh, it's it's a dark comedy. Uh, but what really holds this movie together are, is really John Ritter, uh, John, the late great John Ritter. So without further ado, let's, uh, yeah, let's just try and go over this movie as fast as possible. So the whole framing device of Terror Tract, of Terror Tract is done in the vein of John Ritter, who is playing a real estate agent trying to sell a house to a newly married couple. And every house that they go to, there is a little tale of the macabre that accompanies it, that accompany, that accompanies each house. <clears throat> so, house number one is about this wife who is having an affair, and the wife, along with her lover, killed her husband. And then the wife starts having dreams of her husband coming back from the dead and taking revenge against her. Uh, the segment ends when the wife accidentally shoots her boyfriend, and then she commits suicide because of it. Now, the segment ends with the wife hanging in the bedroom. But it kind of leaves you with the idea of maybe her husband came back from the dead because her body is mysteriously is mysteriously cloaked in uh, is drenched in water. Uh, the first segment I thought was not that bad. It was pretty good. And the story is you know it's a story that you've seen many many times. The, the cheating wife and the husband who finds out he he goes to get he he wants to get he wants to get some satisfactory revenge, but in the <clears throat> But in the end, the tables get turned on him, and he act, and he's the one that gets off. And now his, and now the the wife, and now the cheating wife and the boyfriend go through a series of events in which they're in which they meet their demise. You know, it's a story that has been told more than once, and for what it was done in this, it was okay. It ain't my favorite segment of the move of this movie, but it's a decent one at that. It's a good starting off point. Uh, the second segment, which is called Bobo, which is about which is about a killer monkey. I think the second segment is the best segment out of this whole movie, and, and including and that includes the stuff with John Ritter and the married couple. <clears throat> uh, the second se the second segment is notable because it stars Brian Cranston as the as a dad, and it's and it has a professional wrestler Buff Bagwell, who al also makes a cameo in this segment. Uh, yeah, I think the segment with the killer monkey was actually pretty good, and I and I actually like and I actually like this one. I like the whole thing of Brian Cranston playing like this lovable, caring father who slowly starts to lose his mind because his daughter finds a monkey in a tree in their backyard. At first, everything is okay. The dad is apprehensive about it, but he but he eventually acquiesced to his daughter because he and his daughter have a very strong bond with each other. <clears throat> but once the monkey starts to live, starts to live in, with the family in the fam with the family, some strange things start to happen. Which include and that includes the monkey, you know, killing killing the family dog. The monk, and then the dad finds out about it and gets gets extremely pissed off, as you would, and to the point where he hires uh, a uh, a a uh, a dog pound, a, like a dog catcher or whatever, played by Buff Bagwell. That leads to the that leads to his character being killed off. Uh, the dad, who has officially lost his mind, is convinced this, that this monkey is behind everything. <clears throat> he goes to off the monkey. Only to discover, only to discover that the monkey had killed his wife, and just before the dad is about to kill Bobo, his the daughter kills the dad, and it's revealed by uh, John Ritter's character that that pretty much the dad went insane. He went on a killing spree, and in self defense, 
the daughter killed her father and has since then been in a catatonic state. <clears throat> uh, like, yeah, like the overall segment is fine. Brian Cranston puts in one of the better performances in this movie as a as a loving father who slowly starts to lose his mind. Uh, Buff, Buff Bagwell has a nice little cameo in, in this as well. But the whole family dynamic of the Gatlins, I thought was actually pretty decent. Like, I buy them as being a loving family. I buy the dad and the daughter having a close relationship. And I buy the jealousy that dad has when, when his daughter starts to show more affection towards a monkey than him. <clears throat> so I thought the second segment was one of, was the best segment <clears throat> of the three stories. Uh, the last segment is, is, about a, is about this kid who is having premonitions of a guy dressed up in a granny mask committing murders. And this is done when he goes to see a therapist and he tells her, you know, and he tell and he starts to tell her about about these visions. And eventually it ends with the therapist thinking that the kid is the actual killer, but it's revealed that the kid was there to try and save her by giving her a gun. But the grandma killer ends up ends up coming to the uh, psychiatric ends up coming to her office and uh, killing her with a meat cleaver. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the third the third and final segment it was it was okay. It's the I think the third segment is the weakest one of them all. I didn't really care for it. I don't like the whole the whole idea of a flashback. This this segment has a flashback with any flashback, which can get kind of confusing in a way because it's being the the, the segment's being told to us by the by Bob by uh, John Ritter's character Bob Carter, and then while the story is being told, the character who is with the therapist ends up having a, a flashback and explaining his visions. So it's like it, it kind of gets really confusing when you when you watch the third segment. Like I don't think it's I don't think it's great. I don't think it's bad. I just don't think it's great. <clears throat> but uh, eventually, the movie ends with uh, with the John Ritter character fail failing to sell these homes to this married couple with the husband being played by David Eloise. Of course, John Ritter he goes insane. He's he kills the husband in a violent rage because he can't get an offer. And as the wife is trying to escape the neighborhood. A whole bunch of random chaos is happening. Some dude is mowing over a cat who's buried it, who's buried, who's buried within, who's, who's buried on his front lawn. A woman's wheeling out several body parts. People are being run over. Explosions are happening. The monkey somewhere is is trying is harassing people. Like the movie kind of revealed that this neighborhood really is hell on earth. Like all these crazy stories take place here, and yeah. <clears throat> And yeah, I wouldn't want to live here if you paid me. This neighborhood is like this is this very mundane, you know, uh, suburb suburb is virtually a vortex into a realm of chaos. So yeah, that's basically Terror Tract in a nutshell. I do not think this is a bad horror anthology. I do think that even though some of the segments are better than most, that doesn't mean that they're all good either. I mean, they're 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 run of the mill stories that could have been done better if, if this movie if this movie would have had a George Romero behind the realm, realm, or maybe one of these several directors who did episodes who did episodes from Tales from the Crypt. Then I think Terror Track would have been much much better. I think Terror Track would have been much better if it was made for theater and not made for TV, because you really do get that feel that this movie was made for television. <clears throat> like, it just has that look and just has that aesthetic to it. But you know, it, you know, it it feels it feels like it feels like, it feels like a product of its time. <clears throat> but do I think this movie's entertaining? Absolutely. Like I said, I don't think any of these segments are bad. I just I they don't have that same uh, resonant resonance as something that a creep show would have. But for a quick entertaining movie, hell, give it a watch. It's not that bad. It's pretty decent for what it is. So yeah, overall final grade for Terra Tract is a solid, I'm gonna give it a 6.5. I'm gonna give it a solid, I'm gonna give it a five out of 10. Terra Tract to me is a five out of 10. It's a quick watch, it's 96 minutes. The segments may not be fantastic, but they got some good things in it. <clears throat> and that's the best that I can say about this movie. To me, the most entertaining parts are is the stuff with John Ritter and the middle segment with Brian Cranston. Everything else around it, to me, it does. It, they do what they need to do, but they're but they're also the movie's weakest spots. So yeah, th those are my thoughts on Terra Tract. Let me know yours in the comment sections down below. Like the video and subscribe, and I'll check you back next time for more.